Therefore, we use the right-hand rule to determine the conventional positive current direction for generators. Here's how. Extend the thumb, forefinger, and center finger of your right hand so they're at right angles to each other. Point the forefinger in the direction of the magnetic field from the north to the south pole and your thumb in the direction of the conductor's motion. Then your center finger points in the direction of the induced electric current. By the way, for motors, we would use the left hand, showing the magnetic field and the current flow produce a force moving the conductor in the opposite direction. Now we must figure out how to generate a strong enough voltage to be of any practical value. One way is to increase the length of that part of the conductor in the magnetic field. We can do this by constructing coils of wire. With a coil of several turns, other conditions being the same, we can see a greater voltmeter deflection, indicating more current is being produced. This is because the total induced voltage is the sum of the induced voltages in each of the coil turns. So we can say the total induced voltage, E, is directly proportional to the length of the conductor in the magnetic field. The more wire in the field, the greater the voltage. Let's see what happens when we use a coil with hundreds of turns. But this time, we'll pass the magnet through the coil, for it makes no difference whether the magnetic field or the coil is moving. See the greater deflection of the voltmeter? Another factor that determines the total induced voltage is the velocity of the coil in the magnetic field. The faster the rotation, the faster the coil cuts through the lines of flux, and the greater the induced voltage. Therefore, we can say the induced voltage is also directly proportional to the velocity of the conductor as it cuts through the lines of magnetic flux. And one more factor. We'll substitute an electromagnet for the permanent magnet so we can change the strength of the field. If we increase the current that produces the magnetism, the field becomes stronger and we find the stronger the magnetic field, the greater the induced voltage. A third relationship, the induced voltage is directly proportional to the strength of the magnetic field. Induced voltage then depends on three factors, the total length of the conductor in the magnetic field, the velocity of the conductor, and the strength of the magnetic field. Putting this into a formula, we can calculate induced voltage. E equals B times L times V. B is a measure of the magnetic field strength. L is the total length of the conductor in the magnetic field. And V is the velocity of the conductor. Now we're ready to build a generator.